Today I'm going to teach you how to compile the DSPico firmware uh, with minimal knowledge of Linux or a compiling setup of any kind. We're going to be using a Docker container set up by Dumaholic, which will essentially allow us to run a script and it'll do all of the work for us and produce a file at the end. So let's get started. First, open up your web browser. Next, navigate to paste.c-net.org slash Messiah Abbey. This is the Docker file. So go ahead and copy everything you see on the page here, or you can save the page as, but I'm going to copy everything. Open Notepad, and then paste the contents here. Go over to File, Save As, and then make sure it's set to All Files, and then you're going to want to make a new folder for this. My folder is going to be called Pico Firmware. Save it as Docker file. Then you can close Notepad. I would also recommend going to File Explorer options. Disable Hide Extensions for Known File Types and click OK. Now, navigate to where you saved your Docker file. In this case, it looks like it turned mine into a TXT file. So get rid of that TXT extension and select Yes. Next, we're going to need to install Docker Desktop. So head over to the link here. I'll put it in the description and select Download Docker Desktop and then choose your platform. In most cases, this is going to be Windows AMD64. After it's done downloading, open the file. Here is the basic configuration for the setup. Check Use WSL2 instead of Hyper-V, and uncheck Add Shortcut to Desktop if you don't want it, but that's optional. I'll keep it. Hit OK. Now we're gonna let this install. Now it looks like that install has completed, so go ahead and click the Close and Restart button to restart your computer. Once your computer starts back up, you should be greeted by the Docker subscription service agreement. You'll need to agree to this, so click Accept. Next, you'll see a Welcome to Docker screen. You can just click Skip. It looks like Windows Subsystem for Linux needs to be updated, so we can go ahead and copy this command. Now, open up your Start menu and type PowerShell. Look for Windows PowerShell and select Run as Administrator. Go ahead and paste what you've copied earlier by right-clicking, hit Enter, and now it'll begin installing Windows Subsystem for Linux, which is a requirement in order to get this working. The most recent version is already installed, so we should be safe here. It might have done this for us. So let's go ahead and click restart. If you see this screen that says virtualization support not detected, you'll need to enable virtualization in your BIOS. This is different for every PC, so unfortunately I can't help there, but you might have some luck just looking it up. Once you have virtualization support enabled again, you can go ahead and open Docker Desktop. Looks like it's starting the Docker engine. We also have another window welcoming us to WSL, but you can close that. And there we go, looks like it's started. So now minimize this window, open your file explorer, head over to wherever you saved the Pico firmware Docker file. Now that we're back in this folder, we're going to need a couple more files in order to get this thing to build. I have these files here, but you'll need to acquire your own. First, you'll need the ARM7 BIOS from a Nintendo DS. You'll also need the ARM7 BIOS from a Nintendo DSi, and you need a copy of WRFU Tester version 0 0.60. This has to be named WRFU.SRL specifically, and you'll also need to name your BIOS files as shown here. Once everything is set up, go ahead and click up top where the directory is shown, and then type CMD and press enter. Once you're in the command prompt, you're going to need to use the command docker build t dspico builder dot. Hit enter. All right, now it's setting up the docker container and it will build us our firmware. And it's done. If you take a look in the directory, you'll see that the firmware file we're looking for isn't quite here yet, so we need to run one more command, this. This will essentially grab that firmware file that was built and copy it over here. So let's run it. You'll see that it's done. The prompt is back. And if you check the folder, now there's a new folder called output, and there it is, dspico.uf2. This is the firmware file that you can copy over to the dspico when it's plugged in via micro USB, and after it's copied over, the drive will unmount and it'll be installed. Now, this Docker container is still taking up space on the drive, so if you don't plan on building future versions of the firmware, go ahead and bring Docker Desktop back up, go over to Images, you'll find this one here. DS Pico Builder. Click on Delete, click Delete Forever, and there you go, your space is freed back up. I would also recommend quitting Docker Desktop at this point because it takes quite a bit of memory. And there we go, you've got the firmware file, everything's been cleaned up, and you're all set. Thanks.